darbs jūs redzat šodien, atkal ir jauna maksas darba, viņam māsas lietiņa pateikt par savu koncepciju. Šodien es atveru jums parādi savus gleznojumus uz zīme. Tur jūs varat redzēt triptīku, kas saucās transformācija. Pie durvīm jūs varat apskatīt zīme gleznojumu, kas saucās gaismas atvēršana. Šis darbs tāpēc pēc skizēm par tiešām meditācijās un vīzijās strādājot ar smagi slimiem pacientiem, es lūkšanās savus arī palīgā eņģeļus. Tad arī parādījās šīs vizijas, kuras tiešām esmu uzlikt uz zīdi glezes. Jūs varat redzēt arī karpolu, kas ir mums veidots, kā tās pirmīs un dāvinājums šai konferencē latviešu zīmē. Tās zīmes ir no lielākas joskas. for every field. 
for physics, for ethics, for politics, every aspect in psychology, of course. And Socrates, a great hero for Europe, was calling us, know thyself, above all, know thyself. The person. Socrates was a pioneer of transpersonal. And what I'd like to do in this meditation with you is to think deeply from the point of view of first philosophy across the planet. First philosophy in Lao Tzu, the Tao. Trying to understand the grammar of the Tao. When Lao Tzu said the Tao, that his name is not the Tao. All the great Vedic traditions of old meditate alone and call to the deepest first philosophy in science. Oh, Brahma, Atma, the self is here. That is the person, the human, not the space where you're separated in the separated ego. That is the call of the Vedas. The science of yoga, the Bhagavad Gita, of Lord Krishna, the voice of all speaking to Arjuna, the separated, broken, midlife crisis warrior in a war with his own family, dropping his weapon. Krishna helped him. Or Buddha, great transpersonal moment when Buddha awakened and saw existence is suffering, people are suffering, existential suffering, our life is suffering, we don't have meaning, we're separated. And Buddha's medical prescription, he saw himself as a therapist, a self-coach, coaching suffering human to become aware of the suffering and the end of suffering. Buddha said, I'm not here to give theories or metaphysics, no. I'm here to end the suffering and help you to move into the Buddha space, where everything is connected. To leave this behind, where we're separated and fragmented and suffering and hurting, into the place of wholeness, which is also the place of yoga, which is the place where Socrates was saying, leave the cave, we're living in a cave. We're attached to our senses and the objects. And we think that's real. The forms. The space of logos. The space of reason. Wake up and become a true self. So the journey of these great philosophers, first philosophers across the planet, have been attempting to develop the literacy, the deeper missing literacy of the transpersonal life. And so what I'd like to do you know, in this very short meditation is to help us, come with me please, into these great teachings. Because the Judaic tradition, the biblical tradition, when Yahweh, the infinite spirit, is calling out to humanity, wherever we are, I keep doing this and that. Because this is where humanity seems to be held in our stage of evolution moving from this stage of development into the transpersonal, awakened, global, mensch or human or person. So we can become trapped by our language. The word transpersonal can block us. We have to be careful. Because we're going to see that there is a space where we live All of our life is happening in this mind space, thought space, language space. And this is our literacy. Our literacy is the level of our language. How developed are we? And yet, the great philosophers saw that there is logic. When Aristotle, the pioneer of logic, saw that when we think, to think is to predicate. We have the subject and the predicate, the substance and the attribute, and we join these to make sense. And this, this is the subjective space, my psyche. I am thinking, and I use my language 
French, German, English. Il pleut. It's raining. It is raining. In Hebrew, Chinese, Swahili, all of these different languages. But the logic is the meaning. So when I have the meaning of the sentence, it pictures the world. And that is where the facts. So this is amazing. To understand the laws of thought, how do we know how to join the subjects and predicates, the concepts and information pieces? If I say Socrates is wise, Latvia is a hero, I am a man, I am a philosopher. How do we know the laws to connect the subjects and predicates to make meaning and capture the world and to think clearly? Who am I? Because I am one of those things. I process myself in this space. So that if you live in this space, this is your literacy. You are your literacy. But when we see, if we step back, we have a lens. This is very important. Lens. Like the lens of a camera, the lens of the glasses. We have a lens of the mind. And if we change our lens, we change our culture. If I'm living in the biblical Judeo-Christian world and have that lens, the hermeneutic of the mind, my world is going to be shown to me. This is where everything appears. All of my life and my experience and my mental states are here. So if I have one lens, the world appears through that lens. I am my lens. If I change my lens, so here's one world, here's the biblical world. Genesis is true. Yahweh calls to the world. This is the language of Yahweh. But suppose I'm a scientist. I'm a physicist. Switch the lens. Now I'm physics. Einstein. Newton to Einstein. I see the world. And these are the facts. E equals mc squared. Beyond Newton to Einstein. This is how the world appears through my script. But if Big Bang is true, this is the Big Bang story of reality. The universe is expanding, it's Big Bang, not Genesis. But that's a different word, a different way of putting my word together. Word, yeah? It's a different word. And this is very important because when you change your lens of the mind, your world shifts. How many worlds are there? If I, this is one me, I one, I sub two. Here's me, the believing Christian. God created the universe. Genesis is true. Now here is I, the physicist. Quantum reality, Big Bang. That is the truth, not Genesis. That's a different world. What makes sense here does not make sense there. So I begin to split. This me and this me don't know how to talk. Because when you change your language code, you change your world, and worlds are separately apart, and we don't know how to communicate. This is one of the greatest questions. If I'm living in the Christian mind, can I truly enter into the Hindu yoga, samsara, karma, dharma, prana? Do I really do yoga if I'm in the Christian lens of the mind? Can I enter Buddha space? to understand Buddha's shift from this place into the Buddha world, the transpersonal world of Buddha. Can I enter the Chinese mind and understand Feng Shui and the language of Qi and acupuncture medicine? It's a different world. It's different facts. What makes sense in one world often does not make sense in another. And if you begin to play with these ideas, suppose I say seven is blue. No. 
Seven can be blue. It's a category mistake. Because color applies to physical things. But seven, the number, is not a physical thing. I can't cross. How do we know how to join the correct concepts to make sense and capture the grammar and the code of the word? This is a great question across the planet. So what I'm doing in this meditation is attempting to help us get ready for a profound evolutionary shift from this stage of our language. Global consciousness is moving to a consciousness where we can dance across multiple worlds and open up a deeper level of literacy. And this is what I would suggest all our great early evolutionary pioneer wisdom teachers, enlightened teachers across the planet, were calling humanity from this stage of development, where our worlds are divided, and we can't speak to one another. We don't have dialogue. There is something in this stage of thinking and living and using our minds and our language that is blocking us from maturing into the full person. This is the person, the whole person, not here. This is an object, a thing, an entity, a being. But this, if you can cross into the space where our teachers were calling us, this is where the person matures, and this is a literacy, a different literacy. So what I'm trying to do in a very brief time in opening up the field for what is transpersonal literacy? <coughs> so, the point is, the lens of the mind creates your world. There are many different worlds, and we don't know how to communicate well across those worlds. If I enter the world of yoga, and I enter the way of, world of Feng Shui, and I have the world of science, and the world of American democracy, I am moving into different mental conceptual spaces with this technology. And it breaks them apart. And we get violence. Holocaust, genocide, ethnic cleansing, divorce, breakdown, objectification of each other. Because here you are an object. You make this into an it. It's an object. And all of our great wisdom philosophers across the planet know we are not an object, we are a person. So when we hear the word transpersonal, it's ambiguous. It can mean this is if this is the personal, the ego, ego is separate place, then transpersonal means to go beyond this. But ironically, the real mensch, the real person is here. So transpersonal can also mean transition to the personal. Shift to the personal. And listen to our great transpersonal teachers across the planet. So this is how I come to transpersonal, not only through psychology, but through ontology. Ontology, ontos from the Greek, is the being, the structure of reality, the grammar of reality. So what I'm doing in this very messy situation is to suggest the following. If we step back, whatever culture, the lens you've been raised in all your life, whatever cultural lens you have, perhaps you never stop to say, what, what lens am I using? Could I be using more than one lens? Because I'm a believing a Christian or Jew or a Muslim or, 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 or atheist. I'm atheist. But I'm also a scientist. And I'm also in the political space, but I'm also in the world. These are different I. And in certain of the earlier versions, we say this self is multiple. Yes, but it can be schizophrenic. If these selves are not talking, then you become fragmented and across the many lenses that you use. The self becomes broken and fragmented. So the journey to becoming a whole self calls out for a literacy, a deeper literacy, that can take us into integrity and wholeness. And this is what I'm suggesting. If we listen deeply to our teachers across the planet, let's step back for a moment from whatever lens you're using and say, what is going on in this space? 
Because if you listen to Lao Tzu, opening lines, the power that is name is not the power. It's an invitation to step back from this level and enter into the Tao, the script of the Tao. We don't know yet what that is. If we go to the old, the Vedic wisdom, the great meditating Rishi saw that the infinite force, the deepest force, is own. This is predication, the predicate, subject and predicate, the predicate. This thinking is predicated thinking. This thinking is meditative thinking. It's a different technology of consciousness. To meditate is to enter into the deep feeling of reality itself and to step back from the dominance of our mind, of this stage of our technology. So if you listen to the old, and if you read the Bhagavad Gita, that version, the Lord Krishna is speaking the old script to Arjuna, the warrior who drops his weapon because of the war he's in and the breakdown of his personality. His ethics, his worldview collapses. He says, Krishna helped him because this became impossible for him. So the Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita, one of the great texts of the old, Krishna is helping coach Arjuna to let go, or first of all, to recognize that he is living a technology that's breaking him up, splitting his self, splitting his family in a deep war and breakdown. It's dysfunctional. So the diagnosis of Krishna from this case is that this is fragmented, it separates, it breaks the self, it breaks the relations, and we must the heal, the yoga of Krishna is to leave this space and go into the space of home. <coughs> leave that for a moment. The essence of the Bhagavad Gita, of the journey of the science and the art of yoga, yoga is the quieting of this mind. Stop thinking, start thinking. Let go of this artificial structure that is dysfunctional and move into the own, the Atman, the person, the transpersonal. The Atman is the awakened self. And when it goes into the own space, you begin to discover your unity and connectivity and you become a mensch. So Mahatma Gandhi, the Satya power, the own power. Gandhi was attempting to live this truth, transpersonal, and bring it into the broken politics to liberate India. That's the Satya power. Samat Chitta Ananda, bliss. That's just one. This is a great transpersonal journey. It's a different language. The language of all, the language of power, is a different language in literacy from the language of ego-based thinking. I'm not going to develop this yet. I want to develop, I'm going to come back to this, to ask why is it that our great transpersonal coaches and teachers across the planet were seeing that there's something broken and dysfunctional at this level of development, and we had to grow up into and mature into the integral, holistic, dialogue space. This is monologue. My lens is how I see the world. It's monolens. It's monologue. If we try to dialogue and I come with you with my lens and I'm a Christian, let's say, or a Muslim, or a Hindu, or a Buddhist, or a scientist, or an atheist, and that's my lens, and you're sitting with me, I'm sitting with yoga, I'm sitting with acupuncture, I'm sitting with someone, the Lakota, Native American, who has a different worldview. And I try to talk to them from my lens. I don't really hear the other person. You're, you're taking them through your lens. You're not listening and facing them as they are. Open space. So the mono lens blocks you in the monologue. When you go here, 
you enter dialogues, dialogue. Dialogue, this is the space of I and thou. Interconnected. This is the infinite space of connectivity. The I and the thou are interwoven. You can't separate out this way. It's always the other is within you. The ecology, the entire field. In this literacy, language connects in I thou and it's living, it's a living script. Here it becomes an object, an it, it's I it. This is I thou. This is two cultures. This is pre-transpersonal. This is transpersonal. This is where the mensch, the person, this is a person. I face an other. This is very important. And a person is not a thing. A person is not an object. And all of our great moral teachers said, never, Kant, Immanuel Kant, saw this clearly. He didn't know the script for the noumena. But phenomena, the revolution of Kant, Immanuel Kant, is that what appears to us in the field of phenomenology is functioned by our mental process, by our lens. My conceptual structure shapes what appears. So what appears to me here is an appearance, not the real thing. The thing on sich, the thing in itself, is beyond. We can never get to the thing on sich. The thing in itself. And Kant is right. But what Kant saw is that if this were the only self, we would have no ethics. Because this is where the causal laws are determined. We are not free. And he said, thank God, we are citizens of two worlds. Language is here for Kant. He doesn't have the language for the thing as it is. The reality itself. We may have phenomenology. But we don't have noumenology, and we don't have the language for that. And yet, that's ethics. The law of ethics is always treat the other as a person and not an object. Never objectify another human being. But we don't understand that that is let go of this technology because it objectifies. It treats as an object. It becomes an it, a thing. And a person is not a thing. A person is a sacred other. So the call to ethics for humanity, east and west, north and south, is to enter into a compassionate script where the self and the other connects. Take a work of art. If I see the Van Gogh painting here, the Van Gogh, and I'm looking at the, my lens, oh, oh, it's an expensive painting. Done by Van Gogh. I want to have his autograph. I would like to see this painting. And that's how your mind is working. You're not seeing the painting. But if you could see the painting here, step out, let this go, enter into this open space, and encounter the work of art. Let it speak. Now you are entering aesthetic experience. But that's how it is with encountering another person. This is the case of dialogos. The Logos, reason, the word, the light of the mind, is the Logos here. Sophia. So my profession is a philosophia. And Sophia is the infinite feminine power of wisdom. And the journey of wisdom is to leave and go into the space of Sophia. Philosopher, lover of Sophia. Into the Logos. So the Greeks call this place Logos. Sophia. <coughs> the language of Logos is not egos. The ego sapien, the ego human, is not fully yet a Logos sapien. And if we listen to the biblical tradition where Yahweh calls out to humanity, here, O Israel, the Lord is one, and love me with all your heart, mind, and body. And Abraham hears that. And Abraham has to face a global moment for all humanity. Do I put my agenda, 
my world first, my lens first, or do I open up to the space of Yahweh, the scripture? It was a test case for all of humanity when Abraham said, I will let go of Isaac. All of the great traditions say, you have to let go of your identity, your story, your agenda. If you put your script and lens first, you block what is truly first. The logos, the how, the all, the unified view of reality. So Abraham had to struggle to let go, to love God with all your being. You somehow must let go of this immature level of putting your agenda, what I want, first. I'm leading up to a very important point that what's going on in this level of technology is technology. And many different worlds across the planet can use this stage. It's like the computer world. What word program are you using? Are you using mono word? Or are you using holistic word? Are you using integral word? Are you using dialogues or monologue? Are you using your, your mind using dialogue program of processing or ego log? Is a huge question for transpersonal. So to continue this story, all of the Greek wisdom of Socrates and Plato and Aristotle is to leave the place where we're looking at the objects with the senses only and to enter the world of the forms, the world of logos. The essence of a human being for Socrates, know thyself, he saw it when he was about to drink the hemlock, and all of his disciples were living from the space, and they were crying because Socrates is going to drink the hemlock for the execution of God. In the great dialogue of Phaedo, Socrates was calm. He said, this is the time for my soul, my psyche, to be released into the forms of the eternal space, beyond the space of the objects. So all of Greek wisdom is a journey into the logos. And if we can step back and look, what is happening in the journey of Europe from Heraclitus, Parmenides, Socrates, Plato, Aristotle, Aquinas, Augustine, Galileo, Locke, Berkeley, Hume, Descartes, Spinoza, Kant, Hegel, Nietzsche, Heidegger, Schopenhauer, Fichte, Frege, Wittgenstein, Derrida. What's going on? What's driving Europe? All these centuries, when Heidegger says in his latest work, after he entered his Sein und Zeit, from Sein to Dasein, and Sartre, Jean Paul Sartre, saw that the self is nothing. Etre et neant, nothing. The self is nothing, not something, nothing. And causes, as Jacques Derrida says, that we're always in the language. What's going on in this drama through Europe? I suggest it's a deep transpersonal evolution into the deeper missing script of a lower spirit. Every great step in culture through the centuries is the pull into this from here to here. This is really what I wanted to develop for our conversation. So that the European journey into the logosphere is to enter into a deeper script, a deeper logic, a deeper code for life and culture. The I-Thou culture of awakened compassion and ethics and science. This is important. Let me pause a moment. If you follow the journey of Europe and you come to René Descartes, I wonder whether we missed the essence of Descartes' meditation. I think we did. Because Descartes' meditation is on first philosophy. That's a title. First philosophy. Descartes saw this brilliant analytical mind with mathematics and logic. I can doubt all of my beliefs. What if I'm dreaming? And I think I'm awake. How do I know? I could be dreaming. Right now we could be dreaming. Can we trust the dream telling us what is real? No, because dream is fan fan fantasy. It's 
not real. It's not science. So if I could be dreaming, then my waking experience cannot be trusted. And then Descartes said, wait a minute, two plus two equals four. Ah, even in my dream, mathematics is true. But then he said, wait a minute. What if there's a demon? Speaking of the demon yesterday, what if there's a demon deceiving me to make it look as if it's true? Because all of these beliefs are separate from me. Here am I, and here are these mental states. It could be wrong. I could misinterpret it. I could misunderstand it. I could be wrong. It may be, maybe a demon is tricking me because there's a space between me and it, subject and object. And I could be wrong. So Descartes saw I couldn't even believe mathematics. And so what Descartes said, he got frightened because the other demon was this. We're terrified, as we saw Mandela said, of our beauty, of our power, of the self. It's terrifying for the ego-based person to face the self. They're two demons. So the demon of doubt, the demon of duality and separation, they can't even understand why. And, and Freud saw, what if I am deceiving myself? What if there's a self-deceiver within me? That's tricking me to think it's true and it's false. So Rene Bacon said, I must let go. This is necessary in the journey. We can't stay in the script. And so Descartes' great discovery for Europe is that this is not grounded. It's not science. It's not first knowledge. And he said, I am. Cogito. He stepped out of this box into this space. Cogito. I am. And he was frightened because he didn't know the language. He didn't have the culture. And he, he knew he wasn't here. He said, that's a meaningless. I'm not going to predicate, I'm not meditating. He didn't understand meditation necessarily. But when he said, I am, this is amazing. Because when he says, no, now the demon can't touch me because I'm in this space. This is the self, this is the mensch, this is the person. He was transpersonal. From this person to this person. And the whole question for Europe is crossing this line. I'll talk about that. What is this line? Where does it come from? But he crossed into the I am, into this script. And then he said, wait a minute. Now the demon can't touch me. Why? Because this is dual script. I use language to picture the world. It's dual. Language represents the world out there, pictures the other. So the concept of subjective mind, the language, and the world are separated. <clears throat> but this language is not its holistic language. What does that mean? When I say I am in this voice, it's performative, it's presentational, not representation. When I say cogito, I am. I am it. It's not representing something else. It's not picturing some other way. When I say I here, it pictures a pronoun, represents a noun, stands for. When you say I am here, it's primary script. It's I thou. It's performing. So the demon can touch you here. You are in the ground. You're in the field. Take heart, God. And what's amazing about Descartes, and where I think that Europe missed Descartes, is that Descartes said, wait a minute, maybe I am not first. What if I die? I am in time. I could stop. What if I stop thinking? I will stop being. And he got paranoid. He got frightened. He might die. If he stops, if he uses thinking, I am the thinking. This is a different kind of thinking. I am being is thinking. That was a formula. Being is thinking. I am my being is my thought, my consciousness. And if I stop thinking, I will cease to be. And then he went brilliant to the third meditation, and he saw, oh, if I am finite, there must be an other that is infinite, against which I am finite. And he brilliantly discovers the infinite thou. Infinite being must be. And he did a beautiful proof in the third meditation, not here, in the old logic. He was not going there. 
All of this was here. So they did not discover the Aida. He saw that the, the Aya is Aida. This is huge. He saw he was not alone. The infinite other is already present. And he said, this is the science. Now there was two science. Now let us see what I can know. And then he began to deepen it into the mind body. That's the mystic. He was not doing mind body dualism. Descartes was heroically struggling with if I am by being is thinking, and then he proves that body exists, nature exists in this script, and that he's also body, not only consciousness, but body. He couldn't solve the riddle. He couldn't find a way to link it because of the old culture of mind versus body, broken. Let's leave Descartes. Europe missed Descartes and Edwin Husserl. Phenomenology said in his first meditation, Descartes' meditations, that when Descartes said I am, he stepped back into a new phenomenology. And Descartes, and Husserl, Edmund Husserl, teacher of Jean Paul Sartre, and Edmund Husserl, those were his two great students. Of Heidegger. Heidegger and Sartre were students influenced by Husserl. Husserl says, time out, okay, bracket this. When Descartes said that, and he opened a new lens to observe. So the art of phenomenology, of observing, stand before the work of art and observe. Open your lens, dilate your lens into the global lens. Open the space for the other to show and to reveal herself as she is. This is the new science, this is the new epistemology. The transpersonal episteme, knowing, is to observe without judgment, without a fixed lens, in this way, but a dilated heart and mind to allow the other to speak. That is the art of deep dialogue. And so Heidegger, Mark Heidegger tried in his early career, Zion and Zion here, from Zion to Dasein, and then he left it. And then he came back later and said, on the way to language, we're still not thinking, says Heidegger, we're still not thinking Europe. There is calculative thinking and meditative thinking. This is Heidegger. And he says, our essence as a human is meditative thinking. This technology of thinking brings out who we truly are, the true mensch. And when Nietzsche saw the catastrophe for Europe, this is the place of the slave mind, says Nietzsche. We must go beyond good and evil <coughs> to become a mensch, a human, or a mensch, transpersonal. So to become a person, you can't remain in this technology. I'm just giving e echoes across the planet. I'm going to have to stop soon. I'm watching the time. I don't know how much time. I'm just getting started. <laughs> Buddha. <laughs> What's up with Buddha as a transpersonal? <coughs> the Buddha knew the Hindu all. But Buddha awakened. And then when Buddha awakened to become a human, a person, the transpersonal, he had four noble truths, four global truths, you know that. The four truths of Buddha, enlightenment, existence is suffering. It has a cause. The medical cause is the way we're using our minds. We're addicted to an adolescent dysfunctional script. The monoscript is not the Buddha script. We're addicted, trapped with patterns of thinking, and all of humanity is. It's not just in India. The whole planet is using this technology. So Buddha saw existence of suffering, it has a cause, the cause is the way we're using our minds. It's a mad practice. The third noble truth is we have a choice. We can do this, or we can turn to the script. And the fourth noble truth is the coaching. We have to rehabilitate our mind. The fourth noble truth is rehab into the Buddha space. 
to rehabilitate the patterns of the mind to enter the compassion, to understand and live the connectivity of the transpersonal human. Why? This is what's the most amazing. If we step back from our local world and enter this space, we find amazing discoveries that we never saw clearly before. And this is what I'm trying to bring out, this just. So Buddha saw that in this field, a Buddha field, which is called Shunyata, Shunya, zero, emptiness, empty of all of this. To cross from here to there, you have let it go. And if you enter into Shunyata, it is overflowing with power and connectivity and meaning. The Buddha script is, this is what is Pratitya Samuppada. Everything is connected and co-arising. Everything is done. Everything. Every grain of sand. The poet Blake said there's infinity in a grain of sand and eternity in an hour. He meant this time, not this time. There are two languages, and our great artists and poets and musicians and, 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 and visionaries were tapping this language and speaking to the people to enter into the language. So all of these great first philosophies across the planet, whether it's Buddha, and Buddha was not understood at the start, because people use this technology to interpret the Buddha. Who is the Buddha? What did the Buddha say? Let me listen to more noble truths. And you blow it. You cannot put Buddha's awakened truth, transpersonal truth, into the old box. Why? Because he saw this language doesn't work. It's a suffering. This is very messy. And I don't have to write it so here. Let's start over. Forget this. It's all wrong. It's all wrong. What I discovered as a philosopher, what I discovered as a philosopher over the four, four, four decades, is that as I listened to these great teachers across the planet, they were all calling us from a limited manuscript to a holistic script. Two technologies. They all saw in the Logos Sophia that this language, they were all tapping this language, this missing transversal language and literacy. Here, the language, any word, I mark it this way. I use this mark, single stroke, to the I am here. When you cross this line here, I use double the prayer. This is, now we're in the transpersonal script. This is mom on this, I it, I thou. And Jesus was attempting to get us from here to here. The essence of Jesus for me is Jesus saw that this is the place of sin. This is sin script. Separation from the God space. And so Jesus saw the resurrection was the letting go to die to your identity, to be born again into the Christ space. And if you speak this language, you have to be either executed or excommunicated, or given them up. Because it really requires a letting go of this script in some profound sense. So when Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. When I was in prison, you visited me. When I was hungry, you fed me. He was modeling this living script, the living logos in the flesh. This is the living script, the transpersonal script. And you're calling on humanity. And so this brain 
is the break of sin. Sin is separation. Sin, ontologically, is not just you're bad. It's worse. Sin is worse than just being bad. Sin is being broken and fallen, the fallen from connectivity. In the East, it's called samsara. Samsara is the life of repeated cycle of God living and dying and living and dying. Like a lost poem, like the taboo, the myth of Sisyphus, emptiness, meaninglessness, absurdity. It was seen across the planet. So to go into the place of meaning, into the transpersonal space where the mind lights up with true meaning, that is where you enter into, into the awakening spirit. And so, to sum up, every word here, like I, when you put it here, the self is all, always surrounded. This is an important point. The global transpersonal axiom is that what is first? Tao, Om, Allah, Yahweh, the unified field of physics, whatever you use. It's an infinite field. This is important, it's basic elementary science. If it's infinite, then you cannot step outside of it. You're always in the infinite field. We are always surrounded in the infinite field, the transpersonal field. And this means that whatever story you have, you are always already there. I'll stop now. This is the old fundamental law of logic. Every X is X, every I is I. You are already there. Your transpersonal self is always here. And the journey of transpersonal wisdom is stepping back from the fixed story to open space to allow yourself to be. To moving from the ego pillar to the Buddha flower. Thank you.